Hi everyone, my name is Lena Patel, founder of Global Impact Systems, helping bring the sandbox into the boardroom. What does that mean? It means bringing that playfulness, that sense of adventure, that creativity, that innovation, the ability to just come up with new ideas without limitations, without boundaries, the way that we're able to do as kids. Bring that into our work environment so that we can be leaders, be on the forefront of our industries, thinking ahead to what our people need, to what our industry needs, and really serve our people in a, in a bigger and brighter way. And today I wanna to talk about leading change because this is the number one challenge that leaders, that businesses are dealing with today. How to adapt, how to lead change effectively and how to respond to the marketplace so that they don't get left behind. I understand that it's a challenge for a lot of people and can cause such chaos and disruption in our environments. It can either completely take us out, it can cause us to retreat in some way or if we create the right conditions, it can truly spark innovation. It can generate an abundance of new ideas. And so that's what I wanna, I wanna help you and serve you with today. And I know that if you have a roadmap of how to do this, that you can be way more successful and, and more productive and generate so much more within your company than you already currently are. And let's look at some of the reasons how like change can be holding, holding us back. And, if, if you don't know anything about my story, I grew up just changed, anchored into my DNA from a very early age. My grandfather was uh, my earliest mentor from the age of four and he was mentored by Gandhi. I learned from somebody like, who was right there in the trenches what it takes to, to create change on a really global level. What does it take to charge people with a new idea, to enroll people into something? How do you change things? How do you turn things on their head? And one of the things that I really learned from my grandfather is that we need to be so responsive to what is going on in the environment around us. And I think this is the biggest mistake that businesses, that leaders are making today is that they're thinking that the old way, the way that it has got them to the success that they have today is going to continue to serve them in the future. And that's truly not the case. I wanna give you some examples of some companies that have done this both successfully and unsuccessfully. So let's start with the unsuccessful ones so that we have some context for this. So I'll give you a couple of examples, I'll give you three examples. One is Kodak. Uh, so they were the leaders in digital camera technology and what they didn't realize is that customers wanted to interact with cameras in a completely different way. And missing this, other competitors came in and Kodak were taken out of the game. Another example is Blockbuster. Again, just leaders at that time where people were buying videotapes, going into a store to watch a DVD. Netflix came along and changed the landscape. Blockbuster, again, not responsive to what customers and consumers wanted. In fact, Blockbuster had the opportunity to buy Netflix several times and they declined them because they just kind of dismissed them as this small bag of fries. And we all know the success that Netflix is today in terms of innovation, in terms of how they're bringing entertainment and education so much more into our living rooms. And the third example I wanna give is, is, is Smith Corona. So those, these guys were like back in the day, these were the leaders in, in typewriting before computers. That was, you know, was this model where you literally just kind of clicked on your, like just very much like a keyboard. But as we move to that model of, of technology, of a computer, again, they were just like, huh, this isn't really gonna catch on. This is gonna be a fad. This isn't gonna really change the industry. And they tested it out a little bit for about a year and it didn't kind of work. And their competitor, Remington, tested it out and they had a big failure. And so they were convinced that that's not gonna change the industry in a dramatic way. They were too big, they were too powerful for it to take them out. Well, of course they were wrong. The CEO, at the moment that he stepped down was so convinced that that the typewriter was going to stick around and three years later the company went bankrupt so there are countless examples in history that teach us that if we don't stay ahead of what's going on if we don't look at what the marketplace is 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 revealing to us if we don't see if we don't see the signals and the signs and if we don't respond to them we're going to we're gonna suffer, our business is going to suffer. Let me give you an example of a company and a leader that I think has done it really well. I've known her for a very long time, she's a dear friend, has been a long time client of mine. Uh, her name's Celine Dion. 
And back in the early 2000s, this is when, when she was living in, in Canada, she invited her friends and her family and people, close circle of people that she worked with to Las Vegas to come and celebrate her and her husband renewing their wedding vows. And as part of that, I think it was a three day event, we went to see a Cirque du Soleil show. And that sparked the idea in her of creating a show that involved dance, that involved artists sort of flying in in these imaginary worlds. There was creation, there was play, there was innovation, and it was all wrapped around a concert experience in one venue versus the touring culture, which is very predominant of the music industry at that time. It's an idea that has never, never been done before. Uh, the industry peers mocked her because at that time, people, the only people that came to Vegas were the artists that were on their way out of their careers and they're just sort of looking for a, a place to quietly retire. Not somebody who was at the height of their career, somebody that was young, that was fresh, that was hip, that was cool. Uh, businesses uh, took a chance on her. They built uh, the Coliseum for $90 million and it changed the face of Las Vegas. In fact, it's changed the entertainment world as we know it. Because if you've been to Las Vegas, you'll know that a lot of top artists now come and have a residency here. Mariah Carey, uh, Cher, Britney Spears, Elton John, and so many others. So what she did successfully and what she continues to do, and I see this not uh, on a bigger picture scale, this is you know, how we see it from an audience point of view, but within the company as well, is looking forward, looking at what what hasn't been done before, looking at ideas that we can borrow from other industries and how we can implement that into our own to create credible change. So I encourage you to think outside the box, to be in what I call the sandbox, just the spirit of play where you're looking to connect dots in different ways. That's what innovation is. And if you can develop that skill within, within yourself, within your people, within the people that surround you in your business, you're going to be successful. So I want to leave you with just one tip today that's really going to, that's going to take you on that journey uh, to creating the culture of innovation, for developing your people, generating great ideas, delivering great products and services, and then really serving the world in a big way. And that's this. If you are a big company, I encourage you to think small. You see so many big companies, the 1450s and the 1400s, the temptation is to get stuck in the belief of how great you are. And you miss that these smaller, nimble entrepreneurs or little startups are more agile, they're more responsive and more kind of in touch with what's going on in the marketplace. These people can come in and because of their nimbleness, because of their agility, they can take you out. We're in a world and in, living in a world and an economy where things are changing so fast that when we believe our own brilliance and we believe in our own power, we've taken our eye off the ball. So if you're big, think small. Now, if you are small, my advice is to think big. If you're small, think big. Just because you're small, it doesn't mean that you don't have, certainly you don't have the budgets and the resources of these bigger, bigger companies, but use the fact that you're connected with the marketplace. You're right there, like you, you understand what's going on in social media because you're right there. You understand when Pokemon Go becomes the latest craze that people are looking for a way to interact with the world in a more dynamic way. And if we, if we kind of stay behind our corporate veil and look at it and just go, oh, that's this young person thing, or that's this world of, of social media and apps and games that I don't understand, we're missing the point. We're missing how people want to interact and engage with material. So you have an advantage. It doesn't matter what size you are, whether you're, you're big and dominating your industry right now, or if you're small and unknown. It's how you think. It's how responsive you are to the marketplace. So I hope this has served you. If you've liked this video, please go ahead and share your comments so that I get your feedback and, and I can certainly respond to your questions as well. And go ahead and subscribe to my channel, my YouTube channel, so that you can get more cool videos like this. I look forward to serving you and to see you again soon.